Hey guys, it's Simon and welcome to another tutorial series about a small adventure game that we are going to develop. But this time it's not a full game, so I did uh, two tutorials about that already in the past. So one tutorial was in Java, I think it was called Mystic Garden. Then we did one in Kotlin, which was called Dark Matter, and that had everything in it. So it had a, a menu screen, a game screen, game over, whatever. So everything that you would need for a full game. Uh, but this time I won't do that because it would be a little bit repetitive. So I decided that we are going to learn some, let's call it recipes on how to solve different things. And in the end, what we are going to develop, let me show that to you. So all of that that you see here, we will cover that in the tutorial series, how you can do that. So as you see, there is no menu screen. You directly jump into the game. You will learn how to control a player, so how to move around, so how to make him stop and play different animations, how to lock the player inside the map boundaries that he cannot walk outside of that. So we will have collision handling, like here, for example, for this hill or for this rock. Then we will also have, of course, some interaction, so our player can attack. There will be music and sound effects in the background. We can interact with a chest and open it. And we can also, yeah, combat or fight those little slimes here, which have some, some floating point numbers that you see the damage. And these slimes have a little bit of an AI, so they wander around. When the player gets close, they try to attack him with this little jump attack. After they jump, they have a little bit of an idle time and you as a player can defeat them. And yeah, this is the, the small thing or the, the game that we are going to develop. Maybe a little bit about me, first of all. So my name is Simon. Some of you might know me. Some For some of you, it might be the first video that you have seen. I'm from Austria. I'm not a native English speaker. So the way I talk now, that's the way I will talk throughout the tutorial. If that bothers you, then please turn it off now. If that's not the problem for you, then stay tuned. What we are going to use for this tutorial is that we are using Kotlin, first of all, as, as our programming language. We use libgdx for the game development stuff framework. Uh, we use libktx, which are the Kotlin extensions for libgdx, which helps us to write more concise and Kotlin, the Kotlin way of doing the setup of libgdx and writing some things in libgdx. Then we are going to use Box2D as a physics engine because some people ask me how I was able to do that, that the physics body is linked to a graphic or through an animation. As you have seen that, for example, with the player and the collision handling, that in the background is Box2D, the physics engine. We are going to use GDX AI for the artificial intelligence stuff, so for the state handling of the player and the slime AI that you have seen. And we are going to use the tiled editor, so that one here on the left side, to create our maps to set up the different entities there, like the chest, the slime, and so on, spawn that from the map and yeah, interact with this tiled editor then in the end, which helps us to easier set up our maps and levels. Okay, what we won't cover, just that you are aware of that, I won't cover the user interface part in this tutorial series. So for example, how to set up a menu screen. Uh, what we are going to use, it's called Scene2D, which is part of libgdx, which uh, can be used for, or which is actually used for the user interface stuff when you work with libgdx. We are using that, but we won't use it for user interface stuff. We will use it for the other things, like for example, the slime and the player, it's so-called actors that you have seen that. And I think when you know, uh, when you've seen how to use that, you will also understand how to create an user interface stuff. And if not, I will link some links in the video description below of my other two tutorial series where I covered that specific part. Okay, so what we're going to do? First of all, let's close the IDE because we start from scratch. And the first thing that we need to do is to set up our GDX project, so our game project. And what I use there nowadays is called GDX Liftoff from Tommy Ettinger, 
which is, uh, in my opinion, a better version of the GDX setup because the GDX setup, the official one, is always a little bit lacking behind. It's not working 100% per uh, perfectly, sometimes causing problems. So I always use GDX lift off because, um, yeah, for, for me, it's just the better way of doing it. And also it provides some nice things uh, when developing with Kotlin. So let's simply download the latest version. I will also add this link to the video description. And then once we have that downloaded, just start it up. So that's the setup, how it looks like. So this is GDX liftoff, uh, the game or the name of our project. So I called it Mystic Woods because the asset pack that we are going to use, so all the graphics, they were called Mystic Woods. But uh, for this tutorial series, I call it now, I don't know, Mystic Woods YouTube. Then a package name. So here I always use uh, GitHub because I'm usually providing everything on GitHub. Also that will be in the video description. So the, the full source code in the end of the entire game, you can find that there. Then my account name, which will be Quill Raven, and then Mystic Woods YouTube, for example. And then the, the name of, what is that? Not even sure of the main class. Ah, okay, so that one we can also call Mystic Woods. So it seems like it remembered some of my settings from the last part. For you, it might be empty here but just uh, provide this information. Then we need to select a folder where we want to place this project in. So here, let's just make a new one. So Mystic Woods YouTube, that's it. Then if we want to target the Android endpoint, so if we want to launch our game on Android, then we would need to provide an Android SDK, but we won't do that in this tutorial series. Just that you are aware, so with libgdx, you can choose for what kind of backends you want to develop your game. So you see that here, so we are going to target the desktop, but you can also target Android, iOS, or the web, so HTML. Um, it's basically, you just write one code base, it's then called core, we see that in the moment, so there's all your game logic stuff in it, and then from the outside of that core project you have different launchers, so for example the desktop launcher to launch the game on your desktop, then you would have an Android launcher to launch your game on an Android phone, and so on. So this is how libgdx is working. So again for us we are just going to use the desktop backend and that's it. The language that we are going to use is Kotlin and there of course the latest version for the time being which is 1.6.21. For the extensions we are not going to use Ashley which is an entity component system that we cover in this uh, tutorial we, but we will use a different one. But what we want, we want to use GDX AI, we want to have Box2D and that's it for the time being. Then we are going to the third party extensions because there we're going to introduce some KTX stuff. So the Kotlin extensions for libgdx and there I'm not 100% sure what we all need. So let me try my best here from my memory. So actors for the scene to these stuff. Um, the, as I mentioned, for example, the player and the slime, those will be actors. Then the basic application setup. Then asset management, I think we don't need that. Then we want the Box2D extensions. Collections, I'm not sure. Let's just add it. Not sure if, we, if we're going to use that, but yeah, let's see. Then graphics, this is some utility functions when it comes to rendering. We don't need internationalization, no injection, no JSON. We want to have some log files, of course. Math style, mathematical stuff could be useful. Then here, scene to d again. Again, the tiled extensions, and I think that's it. Okay, then let's move on to templates, and there we want to have a Kotlin project template with Kotlin application launchers. Let's choose that one, that sounds good. And advanced, I think that's it. There you just see summary. So libgdx version 1.11, which is also the newest one, which was released, I think, two or three weeks ago. And that's it. So also add the readme and generate the project. Setup complete. Awesome stuff. Let's exit now this setup application and open the project in our IDE. 
I will use IntelliJ, but you can use whatever IDE you want. I think Eclipse is also working, also NetBeans most likely is working. I personally suggest that you use IntelliJ, but if you don't like it for whatever reason, then choose the IDE that you want. Okay, then let's open up the Mystic Boots YouTube folder or application that we just created. And now let's wait a little bit because now our IDE will set up the project. So LibGDX is using here Gradle as a building tool and how uh, or what is now created and what it is doing. I will explain then in a moment when all of that is finished. So it will now, for example, if you don't have everything on your computer yet with all the dependencies, then it will download now everything for you. So all the LibGDX libraries, the libktx libraries, the different extensions that we have selected like Box2D. So all of that will be downloaded for you. And once everything is ready, then you should get this build successful and this green checkbox here or tick box here. And what we can do now, so I'll explain that in a moment in more detail. So when we go to the uh, LWJGL, so the lightweight Java game library or whatever that, that is called for, there's a launcher in it, which is uh, which is our desktop launcher. And there, let's see if we can just run that. So just to make sure that everything is set up correctly and is working. So it opens up the window with our title. We have just a black background for the time being here. And that's it. But everything looks good because it opens something. And there is nothing more to it with this basic setup here. So to explain a little bit about this project setup. So as mentioned, Gradle is used uh, in libgdx and Gradle is the build tool which helps you to take care of the dependencies. So to set up the different versions, for example, that you can find in the Gradle properties file. So there you see that we use that Kotlin version. We use that libgdx AI version this version for the libktx extensions, this version for libgdx and so on. So there you could keep, for example, your versions. And where are they used? So here you have two uh, important folders, actually three. So the first one is this lightweight something desktop launcher, which is simply just one uh, class, which launches up our game. So it's launching a lightweight free. So there's a version 2 and version 3. LibGDX nowadays uses version 3. So we have this lightweight game library version 3 application, which creates our window in that resolution and uses a specific icon and that's it. We, we never need to touch that for, the, for this tutorial, so we just keep it as it is. But just that you know it, so here is this launcher. And if you would choose, for example, the Android backend or the iOS backend or the uh, web backend, then you would have here separate folders for an Android launcher, an iOS launcher, and so on, which is just the, the basic wrapper, let's say, around the specific backend to launch your game. Then the important part is the core folder. So this is the, the main stuff, let's say, where we are going to introduce all our code. And currently, for the time being, we just have here an application adapter that I will explain in the next part what that is in more detail. But this is then the, the entry point of our game. And there is also a build Gradle file. And there you see, for example, the different dependencies that our game needs. So there you have the GDX stuff, then we have the different KTX extensions, and we have the Kotlin standard library that we can work with that. So there, if you would need a new dependency, for example, then here you will set that. And here you also see the usage of these Gradle properties that you have, uh, we have seen before. So here you have the reference to the GDX version or the Kotlin version and so on. So this is the most important folder. I would say, and there we will put in all our code. And the last folder is the assets folder where currently we have nothing in it. Um, there we would add then all our different textures, the maps, the audio files, and all the assets that we need in our game. But yeah, that's it. So this is the basic setup for the time being. And in the next part, we are now going to update our application adapter class here. 
and introduce some basic setup with uh, game and screens and some rendering that we don't just have a black application so that we already see some textures. Okay, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next part. Bye bye!